What happened to Toronto's real estate market in April 2017? Last month's numbers are out and there's a few things that I wanted to go over with you that I found pretty interesting and then uh, wanted to talk about the Ontario Fair Housing Plan which was announced on April 20th a couple of weeks ago. So let's get into the numbers. Um, if you look at the average prices for the 416, look at Detach. It's just under 1.58. Just crazy. Semis, 1.1. Townhome 793 and then condos are 578 and then if you look at the appreciation from April 2017 to April 2016 it's all 20 plus percent so 22 up to 32 percent so if you look at the condos it actually appreciated the highest out of all and it's it's really driven by affordability I mean if you look at detach you, you're to get into a detached property like a 1.58 it probably needs another $150,000, $200,000 of renovations um, to have it all done up. So it's it's really affordability and not, not many people nowadays can afford this 1.58 number. Um, and people do want to live closer to work and avoid driving for you know two to three hours or commuting two to three hours. So it's really pushing the demand down into, uh, into the high-rise uh, living, which is the condo market. Now... Having said that, it's also the 905. So if you look at the 905 region, that was also on fire in um, April 2017. Again, 1.1 for detach. And then if you look at the appreciation, 24%, 27%. And the condos and the 905, who would have ever thought? 31%. Can you imagine? That's with, um, Mississauga. Markham, Richmond Hill, you know, condo market there, it's, you know, 31% higher from April 2016, which is just crazy. The other interesting number that I see here is the average days on market. So uh, last month, it was nine days for a property to sell. That's how hot the market was or is uh, compared to 15 days of um, on the market for April 2016. So that's a 40% drop. That's significant on the speed the, um, the properties are selling in the greater Toronto area, uh, in the whole region. So you can see it's everywhere. It's it's a 416, 905, and it's 20 plus appreciation, which is not good and it, it's not sustainable for sure. So that's looking back. Now, the one thing, the number that I personally liked very much is the new listing. So in 27, in April last month, the uh, there were 21,600 properties for sale compared to 16,000. That is a 33% increase. That's fantastic news. And the reason is the more supply we have, that will balance out the demand. So a good balance between demand and supply. Technically, we should have a balanced market where less bidding wars and, and price appreciation will come down. So hopefully over the next few months, and we'll see the trend in May, June, July, um, towards the end of, of 2017, if, if these listings continue to come on to the market, then these figures, the 25, 22, 30% appreciation month to month should drop and uh, come down to a more sustainable level. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and hopefully more uh, people uh, put their homes up for sale to, uh, to balance the market out. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the... Uh, Announcement on April 20th. So a couple things. The Ontario Fair Housing Plan had 16 points. I won't get into it because I just think two of them are worth uh, discussing a little bit more in detail. <clears throat> um, one is the NRST, the Non-Resident Speculation Tax, and then the other one is Rent Control. So a couple things to look at is it, the announcement, announcement was made April 20th. The market was cooling in April, so you'll see the government, provincial government taking credit for this, but really it's got nothing to do with the uh, market balancing itself out because people decide to sell their homes when they decide to sell their homes. Now, the non-resident speculation tax, so 15%, if you're a non-resident of uh, Canada, you buy a property, um, you pay 15%. So in Toronto, you pay the Toronto land transfer tax, provincial land transfer tax, as well as 15% upfront. So for example, if that non-resident is buying a $500,000 condo, then they would cut a check of $75,000 on top of their land transfer taxes to the province. 
Now, they can get it back if they become residents within four years. And uh, I should say, or if they have a child going to school here for a minimum of two years, then they can get that money back. However, it's payable at closing. So that increases the amount of capital that's acquired um, at closing when they buy these properties. I'm not sure what that will do to the market because I, mean, I look at statistics, I read reports. There isn't really a good source of uh, reliable information. I've heard 5% of buyers are non-resident foreigners. I've heard 50%. So I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Hopefully we have better data. We collect better data. Um, but personally, just being involved in the market, I think that will impact um, the pre-construction condo market. It will slow down sales. Um, so it'll take a little bit longer to sell these projects. And then specific pockets in the GTA might uh, experience a pause. So I don't think prices will drop, but what I think it will be just people trying to figure out how these new rules will impact the market. So they'll sit on the sidelines for six months, eight months, 12 months, similar to what happened in Vancouver. And then once they figure out the system, the true cost of doing business, they might come back. The other factor to look at is the Canadian dollar with, um, with the latest tariffs on lumber um, and then we're, there's talks about dairy talks about oil and ripping nafta i mean all this stuff can drive the canadian dollar down so having a lower canadian dollar is not good for our real estate market because the foreign buyers um, all of a sudden can now have a better exchange rate so the the real estate market prices is uh, is, is discounted to them because they're converting their us dollars to canadian and um, you know they can absorb that additional 15% tax if the Canadian dollar continues to uh, to go down. So we'll see how that plays out. That is more of an external factor with uh, NAFTA, the U.S., and uh, over the next little while, and we'll see how that impacts the uh, the Canadian dollar. Now, getting into the Ontario Fair Housing Plan, 16 points. I'll just discuss the two. Again, the non-resident tax is one. The other one is rent control. So. Keep in mind, we have an election, provincial election next year, so there's obviously a motive behind it. But I do believe this is a bad policy because rent control now is applicable for anything, and I should say all rental units built before, after 1991, it doesn't really matter. It's capped at 2.5%. So for 2017, landlords were allowed to increase their rental income by 1.5%. It is an interesting figure because the cost of uh, property taxes hydro, utilities, all that is way above 1.5%, um, but the government is mandating landlords to increase their uh, rental income by 1.5%, which is crazy in my mind. Now, why I think this is bad? Because now the um, developers who were looking at purpose-built rentals will pull, consider pulling out, not build these, these purpose-built rental buildings, um, and then for some investors, it, it, it might not make sense anymore to hold on to these investment properties and they might uh, just sell them. So why this is bad? Because the true issue is supply. It's not cost going up, uh, not, not rental income going up, but it's, it's supply. So if we have more supply of rental housing, then these prices will balance themselves out. So a good concrete example, look at the low rise uh, market in, in Toronto. Um, lack of supply and prices have been appreciating in double digits so 15 20 percent for the last what 7 10 15 years so I mean it's right there in front of us we can see that when there's a lack of supply prices will appreciate aggressively so it's the same issue with the rental market if we have a lack of supply of rental housing prices prices or rental income will increase aggressively so what's the true solution it's it's really increasing supply and I, I just you know it's frustrating. I don't know why they talk about everything else, but you know, addressing the real problem, which is increasing supply of rental housing um, in the city of Toronto and, and the GTA. And that's really what we need here. And how do you encourage people to uh, buy rental properties or developers to build, you know, purpose-built rentals? It's not capping their, their increased revenue. It's, it's by giving them incentives to get into the market and buy these properties and renting them out to potential tenants who want to live in the city. Anyways, that's my uh, political talk for the day. Um, so so we'll see how that plays out with the non-resident tax. I think, you know, the market 
not everywhere, but in specific areas, maybe the pre-construction, maybe specific geographic locations in the GTA. We'll pause it a little bit, just try to figure out the details of this new tax and how that's going to impact the buyers in that area. And uh, rent control, yeah, that's coming down, uh, well, it's effective, I should say, April uh, April 21st. So we'll see how that, uh, again, plays out with the, with the market. If you're interested in... Um, in specific analysis for your geographic area or a specific niche market like condos or duplexes um, I do a lot of that uh, for my clients so I'd be more than happy to uh, to do that for you just reach out and uh, look forward to connecting with you soon till the next month I will talk to you soon bye for now